Alright guys, welcome to the channel. This is Southern Builds. I'm Tim, this is Ben. Uh, this is going to be a 2009 Toyota Corolla head removal. We got an issue with, uh, well we don't know what the problem is. We just know it's something to do with either the valves, cracked head, or um, we don't know. That's what we're doing now. We're going to find out. So we've got a cylinder four misfire. Yes. Uh, evidently the previous owner chased it down, did all the electrical, the uh, uh, obvious assumptions. So that's why we got it is because it came to that next level. Right. So um, for the parts that's going to be kind of tedious and long, I'll try to do a time lapse so we can get to the part where we're talking. But for the most part, I want to share as much of this job with you guys as we can. And once again, this is a new channel. Um, you get, some of you guys that watch me, you know I have three other channels, but this is a new one before, uh, for me and Ben, and it's Southern Builds. So let's start this madness and see what happens. Right, so the, just to get started, what we've done is we've lifted the car off the ground. It's obviously uh, set up, removed the tire, removed the inspection plate, and we've removed this um, cow. cow and the, the windshield wipers as well so that we can have as much access in there uh, as you have. Normally we take the hood off, we may end up doing that as well, but we're just kind of feeling this thing out to see what, uh, what exactly we're going to have to do next. So. Here so bear with us guys, let's go, let's do it. So for this build, most everything on here is either a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter, so not a whole lot of special tools required. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these coal packs. Does it matter from one to four? It doesn't, we've already, okay, we've already, right. we've already moved them around chasing that. Uh, we, we moved the cylinder uh, the ignition coils, the spark plug, and spark plugs, and the uh, injectors, just to see if we could get the uh, problem to follow one of those two, right? So if we put cylinder four injector on cylinder two, and the problem follows us to cylinder two, then we can kind of isolate that down and simplify our uh, diagnosis. all electrical tools just to save and cut down on background noise and So the next thing that we're going to try, we're going to do before we go any further is to set this engine uh, at the top dead center part. So what we'll need to do there is to rotate the crankshaft, and from what we understand, there's markers on these are the the VVT, the variable valve timing devices. So we're going to look for the two marks on top. And listen to what he's saying, guys, because this is very crucial. This is very very important. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't set this timing right, this engine's no good. You gotta have this right. spark plug so that the compression is relieved. It'll make it easier to turn this engine over. Boy, it is turning faster. chain's not marked though. So guys, if this chain's not marked, and we did some uh, research, some of the videos we found, the chain and the markings were very visible, but now we're not seeing that, so we're going to continue to look. Wait a minute, I think I found something. Oh my 
gosh. What? Look at these two links right here. Oh wow. Why are they side by side? Okay, that looks. This is interesting. We got two side by side and then here's the second one, but they're not either one of them are on this I know. mark. Is there anybody we can call to, uh... So guys, we're not seeing the markings that we're hoping to see. So we're trying to determine what to do next because, once again, this, this has to be done perfect or else the motor is no good. It has to be timed perfectly. Well, let's keep going and see if those are markings for the down. See these links are highlighted. Those are timing links thing. We've got three places we need to have those. We're not exactly sure uh, who's been in here before, so we're just trying to figure out what's happened and how to make it correct. So I think our next move is we can we gotta go ahead and pull this cover cover off so that we can see the other the rest of the timing uh, devices. <laughs> By the way, guys, I'm, this is my first job doing this. Ben's done a lot of jobs along this car, but different cars. So I'm just kind of following his lead. He's pretty much leading this whole show because I don't know what's going on. And that's probably why a lot of you people are going to be watching this video is because of uh, my situation. Is I, I couldn't find anything online that, that zoned in on 09 Toyota Corolla S to do exactly what we're doing. And once again, the issues we were having on this car was it was misfiring cylinder four. So when you first start the car cold, it ran very rough. I mean, just just bad. When it warmed up, it seemed to smooth out a little bit, but it still misfired. And uh, we checked everything to try to determine what the problem was. We checked valve springs. Um, we checked the fuel injector to see, you know, everything was done. The only thing we did not do is check compression because we already know it doesn't have compression number four cylinder. So that's where we're at now, tearing this thing apart and hopefully not having to replace the engine. Hopefully it's just a burnt valve or something wrong with the valve and we can just do a valve job on this thing, put the head back together. But once again, I can't reiterate enough, this timing has to be perfect. And that's why me and Ben are doing everything we can to make sure it's done. <clears throat> So guys, what we're doing now is we're removing the uh, belt, the alternator belt, because um, we're gonna have to get to the cover for the uh, timing chain. And uh, this alternator was on so tight, um, that we're having to loosen it up manually, take the belt off so we can remove the cover to the timing to access the marks on the timing chain. And that's what we're doing right now. Remember your 
routing. It's, it's pretty simple. Crankshaft, alternator. Can we take a picture with, or do we need to take a picture with our phone? Yeah, like he just said, make sure you know your pattern, how this belt goes on these pulleys. Remember how that goes back on there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the belt schematic is available online. Oh, yeah. Pretty easy. So, there's only three components on this one, so it's pretty simple. By the way, guys, if you can notice in the background, we got some Christmas music. All right, guys, we're moving the... Uh, the cover for the timing belt or timing chain I keep saying but the timing chain and Ben is now uh, loosening up the bolts on the lower end through the access panel and the tire highly recommend that I don't think you could actually you might be able to do this without the access but it'd be really tough and I mean really tough so uh, that's what we're doing right now Yeah, so, so when you guys are watching this in two weeks or three weeks from now, break out the eggnog and some rum. And bring us some. And bring us some. As a matter of fact, leave the, deg leave the eggnog out of it. Some rum. Oh, make sure you disconnect the battery, guys. <laughs> I should have told you in the very beginning. Make sure you disconnect the battery. You're dealing with electric components. It's just a wise decision to, to remove the uh, cables. The negative and the positive, just, just disconnect them. Lay them to the side. All right, so now I think we're to the point where we've got to support the engine because I've got to remove this mount. So Did you remove the oil pan? I just I mean, is there room to put the thing in the... Oh, this oh. won't work on that motor, will it? Yep. Sorry. So what we're doing now, guys, is we're uh, jacking the motor up a little bit with the floor jack. And uh, because we got to disconnect the, uh, the motor mount so we can have access to the timing chain. Block on there between my jack and the engine, so I don't. This wood should be softer than anything. So if it were to puncture, it would just puncture the wood. Yeah, make sure you put something on that that floor jack to make sure it supports the motor without having a narrow little stud going through the old pan. Have a board on there, so make it more uh, flush and flat. Anytime we can avoid metal on metal, right? I'm a fan. What size for the lug nuts? 14? I think so. Man, I'm a huge fan. I've got to get me one of those. That thing is just... Fr Guys, power tools all the way, man. Year 2020, 2021 coming up. Look at this beast. Milwaukee is watching. <laughs> we accept all sponsorship. <laughs> now we gotta find the bolts. Oh, I'm sure they're down there somewhere. Mm-hmm. One foot down. I don't know where it went to, but. Get this motor mount out of there. He's taking out about six bolts.
Like it doesn't let go of it. Do we have to take it off in one piece? Like disconnect this bolt and just take it off in one piece? You see what I'm saying? Take that bolt from underneath there and then take it as one piece out. And it was a booger. Mm-hmm. And then put it all as one back on. Oh, I need to pull this out of your face because you're not gonna see that. Does that hurt you or help you with that light there, buddy? No, it's perfect. Okay. This uh, head job on this uh, 2009 Toyota Corolla S. Um, as we told you before, we've never done this, so um, there wasn't a lot to offer online. There's some, but not a lot. And you got to kind of just weed through the stuff that you know that you need. <clears throat> so we didn't know for certain if it was going to be a head gasket or a valve. We didn't know. So Ben. Went ahead and looked up the time and chain, the sequence. And to pull this time and chain cover off, it's a real pain in the backside. Um, I recommend, highly recommend taking the alternator off first. Because we did, and it was a pain to get it out of there. So we took it off now to where we can put it back in there. And, uh, so now we're loosening up all of these retaining brackets that hold the camshafts on, and we're about to remove the camshafts. And it's very important that you remember which one goes where. The front and the back cam. Um, one chain. <laughs> one chain. Not two chains. <laughs> so, uh, also, the water pump is attached to that cover, um, and you got to disconnect all the ports, all the lines, the water lines, in and out to that water pump, and it's down by the alternator. It's a real booger. So you got to pull the intake off to get to that, those uh, water lines behind the intake. Yep, so we got a basic gasket set, eBay, 50, 60 bucks, you can get the head gaskets with it. All the gaskets necessary. Now, guys, this job, I, I, I haven't had an exact quote. But to go to a shop, easily a thousand bucks to do a head gasket on this thing. 
easy, and I see why. Yeah, we of, understand that. A lot of time involved here. Heard a ball fall on the ground. So I'm going to put these in order. See the brackets just come right off. So the timing chain is off. Timing chain covers off. He's pulling the brackets off the camshafts. And wherever you put these camshafts, guys, make sure you lay them flat and level. That's the last thing you want is problems with those camshafts. I mean, they're balanced perfectly. Wow. Yeah, we were we were thinking about replacing it, and when we started looking at it, we're like, "Wow, it's clean. I don't know it's that, brand new. I don't know that the new engine would look better than this." <laughs> so all we've got left, it looks like we've got one retaining bolt there, and then we got to do the head bolts. But it looks like this retaining bolt holds on to this um, upper section. We've got one. Strange, just two bolts. So here we go. Are we going to pull the bow springs up before we get to the... Surely you wouldn't have to. Oh yeah. It's a 12 millimeter, um, these are something special, I can't remember what they're called. Did we damage it using the other tool? No. Huh. Right here as we go here. You couldn't see them because they're full of oil. Yeah. So what, what tool is that called? This is like a spline tool that I think it is a, a 24 spline, 12 millimeter, uh, it's not a Torx because those are 12 spline. We'll, we'll put the, uh, the link to it in the bio because it's definitely unique. Is that factory, you think? I, I don't know the answer to that. So far, it's 
So this piece and the entire timing cover do not have a gasket. They are all silicone. Which is why I'm assuming the kits that we ordered come with a tube of gray silicone. So, but this is actually a wonderful idea because now I can put everything back into this little holder. Make sure you see that. And that way it stays exactly how I want it to stay until I'm ready to reinstall. So I'm, I'm becoming a fan. I like it. So he's talking about the camshafts and the rocker arms and all that. But I had this nice little box laid out here so I could sit them in there and keep them in order, but this looks like it's a better solution. And make sure guys you know which cam chef goes where. So that means we could have taken this out without removing the cam chefs. Could you reach? Yeah, you could have. Is this heavy? Yeah. So let's, yeah. I believe we could have. Lesson learned. You'd have had to take it off anyway, Ben, because you get a, you get a, well, no, you don't either, because we're not sent to the machine shop. Well, we don't think we are. Right, we don't know if we're pregnant. Yeah. We, don't, we won't know until we pull the head off. Now that head, will it reach down below the bracket for the alternator? Should we take the bracket for the alternator off there, or are we going to be clear? No, we should be clear. It should be clear. Okay. It should sit right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Should we pick up a torque? Or you got a torque bar, don't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's got to be exact. Wow, that's low. trash now so. all right so all we have left are the exhaust bolts on the back we're not taking the manifold off we're just going to take the two bolts holding the pipe to the rear ultimately just because we don't know exactly what's wrong with it so we're not sure what all has to come off at this point we've got to figure that out as we go clean folks <laughs>
right there, you can see where the, the color is lighter and then it gets darker. That's where it's blown on both sides. So that's what's going on in the valves. Look really, really bad. So I'll show you the head here in a minute. Dos coronas, por favor. <laughs> so. So we showed them that this, in fact, was. I'm gonna let you walk up and do an illustration because I just showed them the best I could on the camera. But I'm gonna let you walk up and show them close up the words. That's, that's it. That's our problem. Look where it. Look oh, where it's still running. Yeah, it's still running. All right, guys. <laughs> Uh, so, see right there where his fingers are at? It burnt straight through the gasket. You can see it's gone. And the rest of them are still there. So obviously three and four were having problems with compression, causing a misfire. I'm surprised we didn't have both three and four misfires, but clearly that was, uh, it, it just missed the water jacket. So we, we had no, none of your typical symptoms from oil and water, water and oil. So it was obviously, uh, beat out several mechanics, that's why we got it. So there you go guys. Now Ben owes me a Corona. <laughs> <laughs> so one head against it. Wow. Well that was blown too. It's cracked. Yeah, it's, it was definitely leaking. Yeah it's cracked. It was about to have the same problem. Yeah, it's, you, you, it's, it's, it's cracked. Yeah. So, if we had the parts here, we'd already be putting this back together. So, guys, how many how many hours we spend doing this to break it down, do you think? Three hours? Roughly. I mean, it's not oh, three like, hours. It's not like we were out like, here like, working hard. Just, right, right. You know, yeah. And we've never done this. Well, I have never done this. He's done it, but not on this car. Yeah, I've never done a Toyota 1.8 before. So this is my first experience with this engine specifically on the handguns. Now, I'm hoping it goes back faster because we've already familiarized ourselves with certain components on the hood, but... Yeah, it'll go back together faster, and the next one will be even faster. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, well, there you have it, guys. We didn't know. We were troubleshooting with every... You know, compression, which we did not check the compression because we already knew from checking the, the fuel injectors and it had a misfire of cylinder four, which is right there. Um, the, the head had to come off anyway. Do, not, do anything more. But when the parts come in, we'll start from there, showing you reverse of what we've done and put it back together. But once again, it won't take as long. Fascinating. Fascinating. There we go. All right, so I guess we're gonna set this back on. And the hard part is we gotta set that back on and try not to let this fall off. How's that gonna be possible? Very slowly. Let me show you guys. So we're putting a new exhaust flange gasket on. And we gotta lift that, guys, up in the air and somehow tilt it into that engine bay without it falling off. How the heck are we going to do that? Gravity's against us. Gravity. So what if it falls off? I'll just, we'll just get it back under the car. And maybe we shouldn't put it on it right now then. Maybe we should just take it off. which means we're going to go through three steps and I've got to look at my schematic to do it again but each pair so we'll do one two bolts 
step one, two bolts step two, three, and then four. So it bounces across and it doesn't allow for anything to swell because it is aluminum. So we want to have a nice even surface and we want them all torqued to the exact same amount. And there's three steps. Then we're going to set the timing and then we're going to just put it all back together and take off down the road as fast as we can. So the hay gasket that we replaced was a three ply versus the other one factory was not. Um, so that this is an aluminum head, so it has it will flex, it'll move. If you don't torque, like you just told you, explained to you about torquing them down first, the first cylinder over to the third, fourth cylinder, and then back and forth to tighten it down flush. And you want new head bolts. Don't use the old ones. Yep, they're cheap enough, but this is a big enough job. You don't want to do it twice. All right, I'm going to go underneath and try to get those two. I was going to put the old nitter on, but I'm going to wait till we get that ton thing on first because the old nitter is in the way. So I don't want to make that harder on us. Okay, so these are the head bolts, which are brand new. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten these down. The first, first two right here, first two, then over here, and then back over here, and back to the fourth. So it tightens down evenly. And then of course, we get a mess with timing. We did well, it's timing assembly, and it's gotta be perfect. I mean perfect. So he tightened them down the first round at 38 pounds of torque. And he started from center to one, two, three, four, till you get them all done. Because you don't want to just do them this way. You, you want to do them in order. All right, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's a crisscross yeah. pattern all the way throughout. If you get one that's out of order, it's not that big of a deal, but follow it as close as you can. Okay, guys. He just marked the bolts to go 90 degrees. Um, the first one did, I think, 45. Right, so the second step in the torquing process is turning each bolt 90 degrees, so you need to mark the top of your bolt so you can tell and verify that you have moved that bolt 90 degrees. If you look close enough, you can barely see the black mark on that screwed up head bolt that he did. But it's on there. He, it, all that matters is he can see it. That's what matters. Yep, I gotta know where it's at. It's by the end of the torque bar. So start from wherever you can see something a, a flat. All right, so this is where I'm gonna begin my torquing. So I will know that once I get to here, that's 45 degrees. So once I get to here, that's going to be 90 degrees. 
right, so that's that's where we want to go. Same process here. 90 degrees. You can tell that I'm past my 38 foot pounds that I've already done once. look back at all your marks they should be pretty close to the same and they all are so now the last step in the process we're gonna go to 45 degrees exact same process exact same bolts just 45 degrees so a simple explanation of that is I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna end up where my arm is so this bar needs to go that 45 degree angle Geometry fans, that's a 45 degree angle. Definitely want to be careful because this is not a new engine, and those are new steel bolts going into an aluminum engine. That's got 10 years of age on it. TV, so you can see the yeah, 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 yeah. So 
just you will use a, a tire too if not more of this because the timing cover does not have a gasket and this um, the, the top of the head does not have a gasket and I verified that is correct so get your RTV <laughs> what did you just do man yeah He just wants to make life harder on himself, guys. That's all he's doing. <clears throat> well, that's a very real life example of what happens, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I do recommend using this so you can get the proper amount that you want on there. I'm gonna get you guys a close up on Mr. Ben here as he's doing this. It's, it's almost almost foolproof because it is gonna squeeze out. Oh. But to make it cleaner, we will. This one has two links and this painted mark is between the two links. This one has a single mark, you can see, still see the paint on it, and it matches its orange mark. Now I don't know if we can get the camera all the way down, but it's the same concept with the crankshaft down there. It has to, the orange piece has to line up with its marks on your light down for a second. I know you can see the, the painted yellow. Down there by that big bolt down there is the, another gear and the chain goes around that and there's marks on it that has to match perfectly. All right, so now it is perfectly in time, and how we keep it that way is this tensioner. So this goes on, and it will hold pressure against the chain so it can't accidentally jump teeth and become out of time. So now that's loosely held on there, but the actual the tension part of the tensioner, if that makes sense, is actually inside the timing cover. So what we'll have to do is take the tensioner out of the... Let's just bring it in, I'll show you. Alright, so this is the timing cover. It sits on the side just like this. On the inside, if you look at it, this is the tensioner. Now, I, I can squeeze it a little bit, but obviously if I could squeeze it all the way back in, it would be, it would have failed. So what you'll have to do is take this out, so that way the, the uh, 
tensioner bar can slide in there and then once this is installed you'll be able to slide this back in it will apply the tension to the timing belt timing chain and then cinch it down and it's back good to go so got to do the exact same process with this one you can see they used RTV gray all the way around this as well so give me just a second and we'll get this thing set up and ready to install um, I'll tell you right now <laughs> one of the big boogers for us was the tensioner on the time and play cover um, we had to do some research how to get it to go back into the cover it's the tensioner and uh, we were fighting and fighting it and finally we got it figured out there is a little pin that you have to push in and you have to slide in the tensioner rod the cylinder and as you slide it in it has to be completely compressed to go into the to the timing plate cover and then when you get it in there and tightened up and by the way the seal has to be flushed outward to go into the timing cover and then as you want that, that uh, tensioner to engage um, you got to turn the uh, timing, you got to turn the, the cylinders. Um, right, so once you install it, rotate the engine backwards, counterclockwise, right? So normally we would never ever tell you to rotate an engine counterclockwise. And when I say rotate it, I mean move it an inch. Just enough, because so what happens is as it rotates backwards, it pushes against that pin, causing pressure against the pin and it pushes the, the locking mechanism out of the way so that when you start uh, uh, turning the engine forward, the pin is now gone, it's pushed out, back out of its holding position and tension can now be applied to the belt. So it's, it's a pretty cool design, but scary if you've never been done that um, And this is, once again, this is our first time. Um, so that's done. Um, also to the motor mount, getting the you know the exact position where it needs to be in there's a little pin inside there that you get to slide the, the actual inside the insert that mounts to the frame the black housing there's a pin that it has to be set perfectly um, and everything looks good guys so this is this is you know it's coming along really well um, I think we're gonna finish off tomorrow but as of right now the only thing we have of course all the accessories the furniture and the valve cover and vacuum lines and, and wires and things like that intake too to get the intake um, and this job should be done. When when he was adjusting his um, his uh, studs and his in his valve uh, studs, he had them all marked. Um, so he went 90 degrees and 45 degrees. Remember that. So uh, once again, all we have left now is the valve cover. <clears throat> Example A. Do we have a new gasket? Do we ever reuse that? We do have. I was. That's literally what I was just checking. For right now was to see what all we have and what all needs to be replaced but I'm going to assume we should have these and this all right so it looks like there's some little oil jacket guides um, it looks like there's some spark plug tubes seals and the valve covers this valve cover has at least one two three four five six seven gaskets that will need to be replaced and there we have it. Watch that oil there's going to come across. <clears throat> so guys, uh, I'll shoot again tomorrow. Um, I believe it's a it's a take, cut and take for now. We're just uh, it's getting cold out here, guys. It's it's got to be at least 45 degrees out here in this garage to get the garage door open. And uh, so the last video we'll be shooting is tidying up, getting everything done, putting everything where it needs to be, and getting it started, getting it running. So. Uh, until then, guys, Southern Builds. See ya! All right, guys. We conquered. We got it done. It is all back together again. I didn't shoot a video of the valve cover gasket because there's a thousand valve cover gaskets on YouTube, and nobody really wants to see that because it's so easy. But the real stuff you guys get to see, and it's all back together. And uh, we're going to crank it up. Here, run. Let's do it.
go. Looky there. <sighs> Burn like a kitten, like a sewing machine. Now that's good quality service right there. Got a brand new battery. The sharp car. I mean, she is sharp. Toyota Corolla S, 2009. She's beautiful. So this will end this video for the 2009 Toyota Corolla S. A complete head gasket repair job. Tore the head all the way down and put new gaskets in. Torqued everything up. Well, you've seen through the whole videos. If you watch the videos, you'll see how it got done. Alright guys, stay tuned for the next video that we're shooting on the 2002 Jeep Cherokee Limited. We're doing a head job on that. Got some valve issues and you'll see all kinds of footage on that. That's going to be a fun video. Me and Ben will try to put as much content as we can for you. Alright guys, see you next video. See ya!